music. So I think you, I got it. You I, got you got it. I, you, you're a fucking professional. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I fucking do this for a living. You actually do this for a living. I actually do do this for a living sometimes. I like peanuts. I like nuts. <laughs> oh, fuck. I shouldn't have said that when you were recording. <laughs> Wrecked. Hey, listen to the Commander Cuckoo Podcast, episode 147. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan and Dibber. We're going to continue the arc of the Commander Rejects by talking about a deck that sometimes deserves the nuclear option now. Hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What's going down? Whole ton is going down. We're going to talk about a new list in our arc sent in by a listener. We're going to talk about some uh, new merch coming up. We're going to remind everybody how they can win our super cool random brawl deck, which is in the mail, I do believe. But before we do any of that, we got to thank our official sponsors, FaceToFaceGames.com. They're Canada's biggest magic store. Where do we start? How about this? The nuclear option. No idea what you're talking about. Well, you see, the deck is one of the... We, we are of differing opinions on this one. You seem to really like it. I seem to think it's a little bit... It's just not my speed. We talked about it on the pre-show. I just think it's a little bit more than I'd willing. I'd be willing to sit down with at a casual table. And sometimes a deck like this is just going to get a bomb dropped on it by a bunch of people. I mm-hmm. think this is this is how I think of it, is... The deck is very casual, and we're, we're, when we talk about strengths and weaknesses, we're going to see that the deck is dedicating a lot of slots to, air quotes, trying to win, where it's fairly stout control shell could just cut a bunch of those I'm trying to win cards and just run an actual win condition or combo. Yeah, I'm going to win versus I'm trying to win. Yeah, exactly, right? It's It's a control deck that's trying to win with attacking creatures, and... At this point in the format, we know if we're playing control, we probably want to do something unfair to win the game. Yeah. Because it's going to be a struggle to stay alive, stay alive, stay alive, stay alive until we win the game. And, and once we start reading cards, you're going to understand why it's going to be an actual struggle to stay alive, stay alive, stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> let's Hey, let's read the commandy, then let's talk about every other thing on the planet. Absolutely. Our commandy for today is Tygam, Sidisi's Hand. He is a 3-4 human wizard for Demir and 3. Skip your draw step. You like him. I like him already. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one into your hand. Bin the rest. He also has black tap exile X cards from your graveyard. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. Okay, so 3-4 for 5. Wizard, human? Human wizard? Human wizard. One of those things is relevant. Wizard. Both of them are relevant. I guess not in these colors. Wizard is relevant in this particular case. Yeah, and skip your draw step. Like I, I think it, everything that says skip your draw step, except for that one Jund thing from Alara, Dragon Appeasement. There it is. What the hell? When a creature dies, you draw a card? Yeah. Just play Fecundity. Ye- yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anything that says skip your draw step, I'm on board. All right. I'm on board. And this guy also has removal tacked on if you have cards in your graveyard, which in this deck you're going to see we do. Absolutely you do. So this guy was sent in by patron of the show, Eugene. We called him F. Eugene. F. Eugene. And we met him in Vegas. So shout out to Eugene. He wasn't the one that got totally hammered, but he did also (laughs) get totally hammered. (laughs) We were all having a good time, maybe being hammered. Very much so. Yeah, man. It was actually our friend Lenny that sent it in. He's like, hey, can I send in Eugene's list? I think you guys would like it. Sure. Why not? So we got it now. Commander Rejects, first time we've ever done this too, we're asking for the next list. You can send it to commandercookout at gmail.com or the preferred deck list channel on our Discord if you have access to it. Or you can get at us on any of our other social media. That's like your Facebooks or your YouTubes or CCO Podcast or CCO Brando on Twitter. Very much so. Just send us a link to the deck. Please have it in like an actual deck site, though, not just a list. <laughs> yeah, we've had a couple of lists come in, and it's like we we dig them, and like you look at them, and it's fine, but it makes it really hard to do the show with them. So we got this one. We're looking for either a Shattergang Brothers next or a Wasatora Queen of the Cat Dragon Lady. Yeah, I'm I'm working on it right now. Uh, if I finish the deck, if I do it, it's oh, going to be doing what? it's going to be Shattergang. Ooh. Like, that's what I'm going to do, because it's a Jund Goblin deck that does 
John Goblin sacrifice things. Sacrificey things. So that's what you're going to get if you let me do it. If you don't want to hear about a John Goblin deck that I built, you should send in a Wasatoru or Shattergang Brothers list that you think is fun. Yeah, there you go. I mentioned the preferred deck list channel on our Discord. If you want to have access to that, you can become a patron. Patreon.com slash CCO Podcast. We've got some new patron shoutouts. Let's do it. Okay. We've got the names. Okay. You pledge, you get a terrible and funny, terribly funny nickname. We do our best. Well, I don't know why people want these. First one. Okay. And I want to read the rap song that this guy wrote on Twitter. He wrote us a rap song? It was like two lines. Okay. Shout out and thank you to Noah Bai. I'm I'm assuming that I'm saying that right. Definitely saying it right. Bye. Anyways, he posts on our Twitter. He ats us. Just became a patron of CCO Podcast. If jank is your jam, give these dudes some bank, fam. Oh, <laughs> got a shiver. Oh. That's, that's our new slogan. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm deleting everything off our Patreon page, and I'm just going to put that. Wow. So what kind of nickname does this this lovely human being get? No. Bye. You cut off like a couple letters of his name? Dismissed. Dismissed <laughs> Noah. Bye. <laughs> sure. I like it. There it is. Quit life. You're out of here. <laughs> Welcome aboard. I don't know if this is an acronym, some kind of alias, or just a name specifically put on here to troll me. Okay. But I'm going to do it. Talal? Talhook? What? That's what it says. I'm just reading letters. All arranged in a way that those sounds came out of my mouth. Okay, so Talal rhymes with Kalal. I, you got yeah, it! That's Superman's like Superman. name, right? Superman! Right? And Superman kind of lived on a farm. Yes. So we can call him Superman Cow Poop. Cow hook is like cow poop? Yep. Super cow poop. <laughs> I like it. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Also, nice. F you. Yes, F just, you for I'm being here. It's throwing like that. that out there. Yeah. Next shout out. Jim Dean. This should be an easy one. Jim Dean. Is that like James Dean? Is that like Jim Beam? Either one is a pseudo celebrity, which is nice. I do like a good pseudo celebrity, and we have another one. Ooh. Our next shout out. Okay. Okay, hold so, on. So is he Jim Beam? J Jim James Dean? James Beam? James Bean. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There we go. Next shout out, James McGuire. J s brother to pseudo-celebrity Jerry Maguire, who is actually a movie character, but we're counting it. And also baseball player Mark McGuire's brother. And local radio personality Mike McGuire. But there's two Mike McGuire's? Yeah, man. I work with one of them here. Ooh, the other one is on roids. <laughs> our, our Mike McGuire is, is not on roids. He does have a running club, though. A running glove? Club. Like he does one oh. of those running groups? Oh, I don't... That he runs? You don't want to know what my old roommate Andrew used as a glove when he was running one time no, when it was I... cold, and then he gave it back to my other roommate and was like, hey, I used your mitt when I was running. And she was like, she, yeah. She was like, you just needed one mitt? He's like, yeah, I got cold. Wow, man. You can imagine where that mitt was. <laughs> wow. I can imagine where it was going to go, too. <laughs> to the garbage? <laughs> After a while, yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, James McGuire, brother of pseudo-celebrity Mark McGuire, Mike McGuire, Jerry McGuire, welcome aboard. Yeah, you got a great family there. Mucho entertaining. Oh, that's yeah. Spanish for very entertaining. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what I, yes. Yeah. Final, just a thank you to Chris Them Eyes. He increased his pledge. We are very appreciative of that. Thanks, bud. And he already had a nickname, so F him. Yes, we used it just then. A couple more just quick ones. Like, share, follow, subscribe, leave a comment on any of our social media platforms that you see a deck giveaway post on. We have a random Throne of Eldraine Brawl deck that is going to be given away to some somebody. It could be you. Actually, it will be you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you specifically, because yeah, you. you're listening right now. Yeah. Yeah, so whenever you see one of those posts, you can give us a comment of your favorite commander reject. That means bad commander from a commander precon that you like. And it doesn't have to be bad as in it sucks. It has well, to be yeah, bad where somebody was like, dude, that's terrible. What are you going to do with that? Oh, yeah, that too. And you're like, I don't 
don't fucking show you what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, dude. Commander rejects. November 2nd, face-to-face games open in Regina. That was hard to say. Now, unfortunately, it's in Regina. Fortunately, we're going to be there. So yeah. if you're planning on making a rundown to the smaller of the Saskatchewan cities, ba-boom, you can meet us. We'll have some, some product to give away. But more importantly than that, we'll rock out some cool games and we'll have a good time all afternoon. And then beer. And then we'll go for beer afterwards. Mm-hmm. That's, that's like one of my favorite parts. Yes. Maybe yes. we'll go to Brewster's again like last time. Who, who knows? Say? Yeah, who, who knows, knows where we're yeah. going to go? Who knows? There's so many places we could go in Regina where we won't get killed. There's like two places. There's like one or two places in Regina and, that we can go. And one of them killed. is Brewster's and the other one is leaving. Yeah, the other one is Saskatoon. <laughs> so there we go. I love how people from Regina listen and then when we see them, they're like, F you. <laughs> yeah. That's everybody though. Yeah, and then they agree with us. It's like, yeah, you're right. It's terrible here. This is the worst place ever. It's the worst place on earth. Okay, we got one more thing. One more thing. We have the final piece for this round of merch. Yeah, we've been teasing this for weeks. Finally, in the mail, stamped, printed, sent to us, brand new CCO playmats. Ooh. Oh, I am so excited for these. They are slick. They are very cool looking. We've partnered with our gracious overlords and sponsors, face2facegames.com. They do have our logo, Face to Face's logo, and when they come in, we'll we'll let everybody know. We'll get in contact with some of our patrons because we will be giving some of them away as as gifts, and then they will most likely end up on commandercookout.com slash store. If anybody wants to support the podcast that way, playmats will be for sale. Yes, and I mean they're they're really they're cool, right? Everybody needs playmats, apparently. Wizards gives them out willy nilly, they just like ball out of control throwing playmats at everybody, so we can do that too. Yeah, very much so. You can you can rep your, I, I, I'm not going to say your favorite podcast, but your favorite podcast and yeah. uh, show it to everybody and we'll sign them and it'll be sweet. That's a real thing. Now, the only other thing I have to say about that is they are somewhat exclusive. Like we didn't order a thousand of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So once they go up, we're going to make an announcement, jump on them fairly quickly because uh, they're probably going to go. Here's hoping. We can sign them. We can number them. Make them ultra super exclusive number. I got CCO Playmat number one. Should we do a deck? All right. All right. We'll do this. We're going to start with creatures as we always do. We're going to do this alphabetically because the website we're currently using does not allow us to do anything else. And we're going to start with our Kaomancer. Four drop wizard. When an ETBs get an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. I already like where this is going. All right. Archfiend of Deep Gravity. Ooh, I thought you were going to say deep something else. Nope. You gotcha. 5-4 Flying Demon for 5. At the beginning of each opponent's turn, that player chooses up to 2 Creech, then sacrifices the rest. Geoff was rocking this on people last night. Over his minutes. That is, that's a, that, I'm not going to say that that's great and holds people in check, but if making creatures is your business, that guy's going to put you out of business. That's true. So... That's fine. If if my two creatures are better than your two creatures, it's pretty good. Uh, burnished Heart finds you two land when you sack it. Consuming Aberration. Five mana, power toughness equal to cards in your opponent's graveyard. All of your opponent's graveyards. Ooh, yeah, so it's like big. That's important, yeah. <clears throat> Whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land and puts those cards into their graveyard. We call that grinding. Yeah, so grind one whenever I cast something. Yes. Right? Yeah, okay. And we got Corpse Augur. Ooh, Lord of Tressorhorn special. When it dies, you draw X and lose X life, where X is the number of creature cards in target player's graveyard. Probably we're going to target ourselves because we are going to be doing a little bit of self-milling and our commander self-mills us. But uh, 4-2 for 4. How about a Deathbringer Regent? That's a dragon. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand and there's five or more creatures on the battlefield, you destroy all other creatures. So that's another, like, top of the curve, kill all your guys type creature. Isn't Plague Wind just better? Uh, well, this. Like, I, mean, I know that this has a 5 6 body attached to it, but can you just play Plague Wind and draw a bunch of cards? That's what I'd do. Oh, no, you're thinking of Decree of Annihilate. No, Decree of Pain. Decree of Pain. I like Decree of Pain. I cycled one of those the other day and gave all creatures minus two, minus two. There you go. It was effective. (laughs) It was very effective. 
I used to play this back in our old uh, 4x60 days in Fate Spinner. 4x60? 4x60. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's another wizard. I don't know if that's relevant yet. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player chooses draw, main phase, or combat phase. The player skips each instant of the chosen phase. So you shut off their draw, which we're going to do anyway, so they might end up actually choosing draw more often than not. But come on, that's pretty good if they're not drawing, right? Yeah. I find that this card usually ends up falling into that trap where you, like, it never does what you want it to do. The dude that has all the creatures is never going to pick combat, right? The dude yeah. that doesn't have cards in his hand is never going to not draw a card. Like, it, in general, maybe not in this deck specifically, but in general when you play cards like this, they never do what you want them to do. Yeah, that's the thing with giving your opponents a choice. At the same time, though, like, if if you have lots of creatures and you choose to skip a main phase, then I Wrath of God you then you're going to have to do something else next time. I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a weird card, but maybe it's effective in this deck if we can lock them out of like every avenue they want to go down. Depending on where you are in your, your strategy, again, keeping with the I have lots of dudes, you can just draw a card, smash somebody's head in, and just say go. You know, yeah. I mean? That's what you were going to do anyway. Yeah. All right, Haven, I can't believe we don't play this card more often. This thing's insane. In Haven Ghoul Lich. Four, four for five, zombie wizard, pay one, you may cast target creature card in a graveyard this turn. You may cast target... Dude, that's fucking weird. I could just pay one and do nothing? Yeah. So I may cast it... Okay, sure. But I'm not going to do that. This is what I'm going to do. When you cast that card this turn, have him go Lich gains all activated abilities of that card until end of turn. It's crazy. And you can cast shit out of your opponent's graveyard. This card is nuts. Like I don't know why in we don't see graveyard. It why is it worded like that? That's it's, such a weird card. It's worded just the way it should. You may cast target creature card in a graveyard this turn. You don't have to do it like right now. You can be like, I'm going I'm to target that. I might play it later. I don't know. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Hmm. The boss of me my dad? That's what he said. <laughs> He's crazy. And then when you do cast, you get all their shit. That thing's bonkers. How about Hedron Crab? Ooh, not so bonkers. O2 for one, landfall, somebody mills three. Magus of the Abyss. Whoa. 4-3 four, for 4 at the beginning of each player's upkeep. Destroy target non-artifact creature that player controls of their choice. Interesting, though. I'm targeting it, but you choose it? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah it's, it's very strange. Not a piece of shit. All right, how about Manic Scribe? Whoa. In 0-3 for 2, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. And if you have Delirium at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if there are four or more card types in in our graveyard, that player mills three again. They just do it again every turn. So there's so far there's been like a bunch of incidental mill and just kind of incidental kill your stuff stapled to creatures. That seems mm -hmm. fine and controlling. Like we're going to get our value back out of our, our regents and our, our consuming aberrations and stuff because we're going to have these big creatures to hit them with, right? Are we going to get value out of Murderous Rider? There's another one, Throne of Eldraine. It's, it's got an adventure. I love adventure. Yeah. Swift End is an instant for Black Black 1. Destroy target creature or planeswalker, you lose 2 life. And then later you can cast it for Black Black 1 as a zombie knight with lifelink. 2-3 when it dies, shuffle it back into your library. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the bottom of your library. Yeah, that's fun. I was, in a, I was trying to trade for one of these yesterday in Notion Thief. Yeah, we don't play this card very often either, but no. this is a mighty, mighty card. 3-1. Yep. Oh, sorry. We're going to do the shout-out right now. Sure. Okay. So our boy over at Jumbo, Jumbo Commander, it's DJ, yep. recently did a video on, on the eight meanest cards that he can think of in Commander. We're playing three of them in this deck. <laughs> we didn't even mean to do that. Yeah. So if DJ's listening, and, and he is, F you, man. We do what we want. You aren't our dad either. Yeah. Yeah. You don't tell us what to do. CCO Nation does whatever it wants. Notion Thief. Notion Thief. Got there. 3-1. Flash for four. If an opponent would draw a card, except for the first one they draw this turn, they skip that and we draw it instead. <laughs> it's got Flash. <laughs> yeah. So they're going to be like, Blue Sun for 10? Nah, just kidding, Notion Thief. You draw none. <laughs> you draw none. I'll, th thanks, buddy. Yeah, draw. Notion Thief. Turns out it's good. Next card is Solemn Simulacrum. We all know what he does. He finds a land, and then he dies, and he draws a card. 
Next up, we have Dink Seed Imp. I'll let you take that one, too. Stinkweed Imp is the real name of the card. It's a 1-2 flyer that has sort of death touch, and he has Dredge 5. We all know what Dredge does, right? Yeah, Dredge 5. Dredge 5 is real good. Turns out. It's the best you can do in modern. <clears throat> Apparently, 6 is too many. 5 <laughs> is okay, though. <laughs> what, what is it? Um, 9 mana, Dredge 10, your life total is 1? Yes. And you'd play it? i play four of them. <laughs> I'd play four of them in Commander. <laughs> yes. I would cheat. All right. Next up, we have Villas, Broker of Blood. I just recently played against this guy, too. I hate him. You know what? Speaking of cheating, this guy's as close as you can get. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. So he's an 8-8 Flying Demon for eight. That is black, 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 five. That's eight, right? That's eight. Last time I checked. You can pay a black, pay two life. Target Creech gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Hmm. Fine. Whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. Good God. And he's got a, he's got a pay life ability right on him. The reminder text even says that damage counts as loss of life. So if somebody's effing with you, you're just going to draw a bunch of cards. Yeah. Or if you didn't want to lose life anymore because you're playing blue-black and you can just draw cards anyways... Or if you're playing cards that say you can't draw cards, like we are, <laughs> yeah. you could just, like, block with it. He's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a giant creature. <laughs> Shit. He is legendary, however, so you can't copy him with Vizier of Many Faces. I thought you were going to say, he is legendary, though, so you can only play one. <laughs> No, nope. and, and I thought, wait a second, we're on episode one forty-seven, Brando. This is a commander yeah, podcast. I'm just learning how EDH <laughs> works right now as we talk. Oh man, okay, Vizier of Many Faces, zero zero for four, so he's not passing any vanilla testing scales. But you may have him enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, right? Yep. And if he is embalmed, he's white in, and a zombie. Yes. And he's got embalm. He's got embalm for five. I like Vizier of Many Faces. I think he's cool. Yeah, like an embalm is when he's dead, you can pay his embalm costs and he comes back onto the battlefield yeah. and he copies something, right? You remove him from the graveyard and you get a token that's a copy of him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, it's cool. I, li I like Vizier of Many Faces. And they all came back as little mummies. Like when you bought the fat pack, they had tokens for each and every oh, embalm yeah. card and they were all mummies. It was really I, cool. I play exactly one embalm guy in Brian Stoutarm. Is, is, okay, so it's not Vizier of Many Faces. Is it the cat? It's the cat that when he ETBs, you can fling something. <laughs> and then when he dies, you can embalm him and fling another thing. Nice. Now, where do we go after Creatures Instance, right? Oh, yeah, we can. I mean, we can do whatever we want. We It's our podcast. That's true. Or let's, just, let's, 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 let's just keep it to, to, you know what, fuck it. Let's do the Planeswalkers instead. Let's do it. You're right. We'll do whatever we want. No, no, ch no, uh, no surprises that we're planning Planeswalkers here. I don't think. I don't think any of these are surprising. Ashiok the Dream Render? Oh my lord. This car. The Planeswalker suite in this deck, she's a beating. Yeah. So Ashiok, five loyalty. You know what? Who cares? Spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause them to search their libraries. Or you could minus one Ashiok and target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, then exile your opponent's graveyards. Yeah, so, so you can you, mill you yourself can, and exile all their all their you, yards. You can mill yourself and then exile their graveyards five times. Yeah, all the while they can't use their fetch lands. Yep, or their tutors. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Ashiok's one bad bitch. That's all I know. All right, next up we got Jace, wielder of mysteries. Ooh, if you would draw a card while your library is empty, you win the game. So he's lab maniac. He's lab maniac. We could like. I haven't found the way to go infinite yet with um with uh, Villas Broker of Blood. I haven't found it yet. It's probably in here. It might not be in here. I don't know. Anyways, plus one. Target player puts top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Then we draw a card. So we could target ourselves. Mill yep. two, draw one. Yep. And then we could reanimate something. I don't know. Maybe that's a thing. Minus eight is draw seven cards. Then if your library has no cards in it, you win the game. Yeah. Just in case you were at exactly seven. And you just really wanted that Lab Maniac to go off. There you go. <laughs> and he's also playing Narset, because of course he is. If somebody else would draw more than one card in a turn, they don't. Yeah. And you can minus two. Look at the top four of your card. Top four cards of your library. You can reveal a non-creature, non-land. Put it into your hand. Jesus. Those are good. Those are really... What the hell are they doing printing those at Uncommon? Like, what the hell? 
Ah, those are good. And they picked Ashiok and Narset, like two of these kind of like, yeah, they're there, but like, what's the big deal? And they just print these crazy CDH planeswalkers. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? What in the hell were they doing? Man, what the hell? I, was, I like I like Ashiok and Narset. I like them. I'd be friends with them. I have the Japanese ones, not foil, of course, but I have the, the Japanese oh, ones. Yeah. I, think they're, I think they're cool. Neat. Do some enchantments. We've sure. talked about this card in the past. It's got cool art, old as hell. Explain to us, Ryan, what Breath Stealer's Crypt does. Four mana. Whenever a player draws a card, if the card is a creature, that player pays three life or discards the card. Hey, this is starting to feel like a Nekizar deck. Yeah. Just with no red. Yeah. And we haven't gotten to what I think that the red cards have turned into yet, but we starting will. to feel a little bit like Nekazar. How about Diabolic Servitude? There's a lot of text on this card to say it's anime dead. Yeah, four mana anime dead. I think you can get it back if the creature dies. Yeah, it goes back to your hand kind of like, um, it's that green Rancor. Yeah. It's kind of like Rancor, but it's anime dead. It's good. It's got a cool picture on it too. Lots of snakes. How about Kaya's Ghost Form? This is a one mana enchantment. When enchanted permanent dies or is put into exile, which is a little bit weird, return that card to the battlefield under your control. You can enchant a creature or a planeswalker. Yeah, so you could continue to Ashiok people's graveyards away after you put them to, put them to zero. You could get your Narset back. You could get your Velus Bloodbroker back. This is another combo card, but I don't like. I don't. I don't see it yet. We have a Paradox Haze. It gives you an additional upkeep. We're gonna see some upkeep stuff happening as we move along here we have a phyrexian reclamation Ooh, one mana but then you can pay black one pay two life and draw two cards with, with velus <laughs> of course sure return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand it's a harobi special is what i call that one yeah that would be pretty good and good. we could we could just like get back you know our Deathbringer regent or whatever to destroy all creatures again you could also bring back your Tigam Sidisi's hand if it's getting beat to death, because it probably will based on some other cards we're going to talk about here in just a second. Mm. How about Psychic Possession? Ooh, Dana Roach Special, I think. F those guys over at CMDR Central. Especially Max Crandell. Yeah, 100%. So this is Enchant Opponent. Cool. Skip your draw step. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever Enchanted Opponent draws a card... We draw a card. You may draw a card. You don't even have to. We don't even have to. You just think about it. Yeah, kind of a a, kind more? of a non bow with Narset, but you know what? I'll take them both. <laughs> Why not? How about the Eldest Reborn? Oh God, do I have to read all this? I can do it if you don't want to. It's a saga. Three steps. First step: each opponent sacks a creature planeswalker. Second step: each opponent discards a card. Third step: put target creature or planeswalker from a graveyard onto the B under your control. And it has a sweet picture on it. Sweet pitch. Yeah. That's that's it. It's a discarding, milling, creature killing reanimation spell. It takes three turns. Whoa. You had me until you said it takes three turns. Yeah, well, it's... You know what? You still have me. It's, it's, it's fine. Let's play. Well, we're playing it. Here's another deck off of the uh, Jumbo Commander Don't Play This list in Zur's Weirding. Four mana. Players play with their hands revealed. So... Really good if we've got, like, Counterspell, and they know we have it. Yeah. You ever play Telepathy when somebody knows that you have a Counterspell? They're just trying to bait it out of you, and you're like, no, yeah, that's good. Anyways, if a player would draw a card, they reveal it instead, then any other player may pay two life. If they do, the drawed card goes into the graveyard. Yeah. It basically says nobody gets to draw anything good ever. Yeah. That's that's what that says. Because it can become quite spiteful. Unless, of course, the whole team teams up on you, in which case you're just paying two life to stop your opponents from drawing cards until you can't anymore. And every time you do that with a Villas, yeah, if you, have a Villas, you just draw those cards and they pay two life. Or if you brainstorm, they take six. <laughs> <laughs> those are some enchantments. Let's do, now let's do the instance because they're the next category of thing. Sure. We have Brainstorm we talked about. We have Counterspell. Everybody knows what that does. Dissolve is a Counterspell. We have Cyclonic Rift. We might talk about that in a minute. We have Swan Song, Wizard's Retort, Soul Manipulation. Oh, hey, the, wait, hold on. Wizard's Retort. If we control a wizard, it costs blue, blue instead of blue, blue, one. Well, there we go. Got there. So it's Counterspell. We have Soul Manipulation, Reality Shift, 
Are th those are all these are all kind of counter all and of these, removal spells, right? They're, they're all counter spells or removal spells. Yeah. Okay. The well, first one to not be that is Ancient Excavation. Ooh, okay, four mana, draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand, then discard a card for each card drawn this way. That's like super brainstorm. It's pretty good. And it's got basic land cycling, just in case. <laughs> just in case we're hard up, we can search for a fucking basic. <laughs> <laughs> what else do uh, Forbidden Alchemy is another one that... This is another one that's going to let us do a little bit of butt stuff. Look at the top four of your library. Put one of them into your hand, the other one into your butt. Graveyard. Yeah. Flashback seven. Maybe we need that basic land cycling. <laughs> Forget an alchemy though, like original Innistrad limited superstar. It's a neat card. Yeah. I played what the hell deck did I play? I actually had a deck that I played that in. I forget what it was. It doesn't it, it matter. It saw some standard play too, but you know what? We are Commander Cookout Podcast. That's true. How about Mausoleum Secrets? Hey, do you, this card got some hype. So this is what it is. It's got Undergrowth, so it's going to care about how many creatures we have in our graveyard. Instant speed, black, one. Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creatures in our graveyard. Then put it into our hand. You want, you want 99 cents, Ryan? Mausoleum Secrets? You know why it's 99 cents? Because it's not $45 and Demonic Tutor? Exactly. <laughs> it's it's not good enough. It's fine in this deck. In a we, deck like this, it's great. It's a great include, really spicy, and it's an instance that's fucking cool. Yeah, Anywhere self, else? What, what do we got? Self-mill with 17 creatures? It's pretty good. And we could feasibly have our commander in our graveyard, too, because we're playing Reanimate. There's lots of ways to get him so back, we yeah. So could, we could like put our commander in our graveyard and then Mausoleum Secrets for a... Reanimate spell? Yeah. All kinds of stuff with it. Memory Plunder is a good card? Yeah, that's Demir 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 Hybrid. You may cast target instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. You're for free. Whoa, and it's an instant so I can get your whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good card. It's a very cool card. I did, now that we've reached the end of the instance, is now the time to say that I'm super soft on Cyclonic Rift and I know how good it is and I know how big a blowout it is, and I know that everybody is going to keep playing it, and I don't think it should be banned, and I think everybody who plays it should be able to play it, but I'm not going to. You do you, my friend. Yeah, man. I'll I'll play a deck that's, air quotes, less good, because I don't want to we were talking. We were talking a little bit about the show. You could free up like a seven, like let's call it what it is. It's a seven mana spell, right? Yeah. You could free up like a seven mana slot. Lower the curve a little bit, play maybe a piece of removal. You know what I'd play instead in this deck? Wow. Zadok, Lord of Secrets. Yes. Yep, that's that mill vampire. Yeah, when he, when he hits you, you prevent the damage and they mill that many cards. Yeah, and, and then you add that many counters to him so he doubles in size every time he hits you. Oh, somebody. exponential mill. That's right. Yes. And blocking if you ever have to do that. Hell yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that taking Cyclonic Rift out of the deck and putting Zadok Lord of Secrets into the deck. I'm not going to say that that makes the deck better, <laughs> but you are playing into this deck strategy should you do that. <laughs> and you're playing into the strategy where you have 30 extra bucks in your pocket to just go buy some beer. That's right. And everybody likes doing that. Having 30 extra dollars is having 30 extra dollars. That's like four beer in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right on. There's our instance. Sorceries? Source. We have Bond of Insight. I gotta, I gotta read this. I don't even know what this does. Each player puts top four cards of their library into the graveyard. Return up to two instants and or sorceries from your graveyard to your hand. Jesus, that's actually really good. That's a hell of a card. Yeah, I like that with extra turns. I like that with virtually anything. Two, and or sorceries. So two sorceries that say take an extra turn after this one. Up to. Too. So, like, if you only have one, you can still get it. This card is crazy. Yeah, I like that one. How about Bond of Revival? This one, I all, I know that I like this one already. Five mana, return target, creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. So, Zombify and uh, Return from the Grave, Pull from the Grave or whatever, they're at the five mana slot as well. Zombify makes it into a zombie, which is not irrelevant sometimes. But this gives them haste, and I think probably that's better... Like 90% of the time? In general. Also, this has a way cooler art for foiling. Yes, I've, I think I have a foil one of these. I think. I bet it's nice. It is cool. They're buried alive. It finds three things out of your library, puts them into your bin so you can reanimate them. Yep. With reanimate, yep. which we're also playing. We have spell twine next. 
before spell twine, I think it should also be mentioned that we do have stitch together and victimize as well in the yeah. in the reanimate slots. Good call. Gotcha. Teamwork. Spell twine. Six mana. Ooh. Exile target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard and target instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard. Copy those cards, cast them. And exile spell twine. Yeah. It's a good card. I should say you just you, you get them. You cast them without paying their mana cost. Yeah, you cast them for free. That's a cool card. I like that one. So you pay six and you get four spells? Two. So you pay your six, I get my thing, and I get your thing. Oh, one of my things and one of your things. I thought yes. it was my thing and my thing and your thing and your thing. Oh, <laughs> no. That'd be a, you would definitely know what this card did if it did that. Yes. Do I exile them and then I cast them with from exile? You exile them, to copy them, and then cast the copies. The oh, spells are yeah. gone. I afterwards. was thinking, I want to play that in Savine and cast them from graveyards, but no, I'm exiling them and casting them from exile. Worst. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're playing Toxic Deluge, one of the better sweepers on the earth. You pay life. Things get smaller based on the life you paid. You draw a bunch of cards with your Villas. Oh, yeah. Draw f 35. Yeah. That's, that's how I roll, baby. <laughs> <laughs> how about Whispering Madness? That is a windfall that you cipher onto something. So it's when you cast it, each player discards their hands and everybody draws equal to the greatest number discarded this way. When you cast it, you cipher it onto a creature. Whenever that creature hits you, I can cast it again for free. Yep. And I'm sure I just reanimate something and then hit you with it when you're not expecting it so we can continuously windfall. Probably. And we're also playing windfall. Yes, Windfall is the last sorcery. Yeah, so very very much feels like a Nekuzar deck, except we're playing Reanimates instead of like wheel effects in red. Yeah. Okay. Hit us with some mana rocks. Ashnod's Altar, Commander Sphere, Demir Signet, Sol Ring, Talisman of Dominance, Thought Vessel. That is it. And then we have some other stuff. I think we can we can probably lump at this point in the commander format. We could probably just say swift foot boots and whisper silk cloak as well, just because they they give us protection to whatever we want to have protection or unblockable and whisper silk's case when we have like a consuming aberration. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, there's a win con that we didn't actually discuss. I'm just gonna give them shroud and unblockable. Take forty. Yeah, that isn't terrible. That's not too bad. I love doing forty to something. We got uh, Sword of the Animist. It's an equipment that lets you find basics, put them into play tapped. We have an Omen Machine. How about Omen Machine? You know what? This is one of the ones that it's like, I just never know what this does. But you know what? It's got text on it that I think we're going to like. Players can't draw cards. Die. And it should be worth noting that our commander says, skip your draw step. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, we look at the top three and we get one and bin the other two. That's not drawing. So when everybody has to skip with like a Xur's Weirding, an Omen Machine, a Breath Stealer's Crypt, we don't care because we're not ever actually drawing any cards with our commander. Yeah. That's important. That's 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 the that's the hinge or the the fulcrum, the, the crux. The crux, yeah, the crotch. The scissor <laughs> sister of the deck. <laughs> okay. Omen machine. I don't want a scissor sister with this. Can't draw cards. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player exiles the top card of their library. If it's a land, they can put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, that player casts it without paying its money. What? That just gives it to us for free? Yeah. That's one of those cards that could what the? very much just blow you right out. Whoa. This is the opposite of what I thought this was going to do. Thanks for the Ulamog, asshole. Is what that could say. Yeah, I want Ulamog in our graveyard so we could, so like I could instant speed get it back with something. No, just get owned by it. Unless. Yeah, read the next card. Unless you're playing another one off of DJ's list. I'm going to keep throwing, throwing back to this. There's lots of mean shit in here. Possessed Portal. Hmm. This one's eight mana. I wish there was Reanimate Artifact. Yeah, we know what happens when you pay eight mana, though, right? You probably win the game. <laughs> so if you've got your commandy which gives you cards even though you're not allowed to draw cards. Possessed Portal says, if a player would draw a card, that player skips that draw instead. It's already good. <laughs> At the end of each turn, each player sacks a permanent unless they discard a card. Whew. That is so excellent. At the end of each turn. Can I can I come clean with you? Yes. I'm going to come clean with you and everybody in the nation right now. I briefly considered, because I have one of these, I briefly considered running it in my Tan of the Butt Sower deck. Because you've got Saprling. Because I play everything that gives me a Saprling during everybody else's upkeep. Dude. So it's like, I'll get a Sap. 
Fuck you. I'm going to sack the sap. I don't even care. And then the next turn comes around. I'm going to get another sap. What oh, you yeah. Gonna do? S- sack your creatures, bro, so I can hit you with Tana and get more sapperlings to keep Possessed Portal around. Exactly. Hey. But I didn't do it because it's like, oh, I don't want to be that guy. I, I'm not going to be that I, guy. I like your style. <laughs> But I did. I did consider it. I, I did think about it really fucking hard. Is is that the deck? That's the whole deck. Well, is, any any lands of note? Yes. We, we got a, Baju- a Bajuka bog. Bajuka. Of course, there's a Bajuka bog. There's all of your really good. Like I guess not all of your really good kind of dual lands. You got your drowned catacomb, your dismal backwater, your demure aqueduct, your dark water catacombs. All that stuff is all here. But then at the very bottom, we see Temple of the False God. <laughs> yeah. I hate Temple of the False God, and I don't think I'm being a curmudge when I say. There are there is any other land that you could play that's usually better than that. I w- would be inclined to agree that it is not the once highly touted on land that it used to be. Yeah, like you could definitely have a, a hand, an opening hand that's got land, land, temple of the false god, and then some really good shit. Bunch of three drop mana rocks. But you don't want to keep it because your temple of the false god doesn't do anything. Yes. My only argument in this particular deck is it is a slow, grindy deck. We are going to be going to turn a thousand, and eventually that card is going to get us more value than other people's lands. That's true. And what that means is, is if you play a swamp on turn one and tap it for one mana every single turn until I can play my temple on turn five, I've got to go like, what, five turns? of getting two mana, so it's like turn 10 by this point, where I've made parity. If we go to turn 15 like this deck wants to, I'm going to be up five mana on you, and five mana is enough to win a game off of, right? But we've got to go 15 turns for that transaction to become in my favor, right? Also, you could just sit there on four lands with a Temple of the False God in play feeling like a stupid asshole because you only have three mana. Exactly. That's the that's the trade-off that you're making. Those are both sides. Like, m- my, my best case scenario is the game going to turn 15 is not <laughs> a very good best side, and your downside is very bad basement yes <laughs> right you're digging is... a hole in the basement and you're just gonna bury yourself in it <laughs> woof that's the deck i like it i've got some suggestions i don't know if you're into them i'll work them in with the strengths and weaknesses sure so peep this controlling lets you decide what the threat is right like we can decide what you keep what i reanimate blah 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 right sure i can i can kind of decide the general power level that the table is going to play at and because I'm playing reanimation, we talked about this in our Tariel episode from two weeks ago. The 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 Vizier of Many Faces, the reanimation stuff lets us kind of scale our deck with the the power level of the table. Always good to be able to do that. Yeah, it's funny that we talked about that in Commander Rejects arc. I, I guess that's like that's how I tie it together. Well, but... sometimes that's how the rejects have to win, is they have to rely on your opponents doing better stuff than you. <laughs> Except we're playing Cyclonic Rift. It's like the best card in the <laughs> format. Uh, anyways, uses multiple zones. Maybe that's how we we can tie it back to that Tariel deck as well, is we're using the graveyard, our hand, and hell, we're even casting stuff from Exile. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Weaknesses. We're doing fair stuff. We're attacking with creatures to win. In my best... Um, evaluation of the deck. Yeah, there, we looked pretty hard for like infinite ways of, and it's either we're gonna very, get dest- we're gonna get destroyed because we just missed what's obvious, or it's not obvious. Yeah, it's either convoluted or we just missed it. We, we're human. Sometimes that happens. I mean, it happened like once. We made a mistake, like on episode whatever eight. Yeah, it's fine. It once. Yeah. So weakness, difficult to pilot, right? These controlling, these control decks, or these stacks light decks. Very highly reward like good threat threat assessment, or, or knowing in ten turns from now that's going to be what wins the game. So I got to counter it now and just like eat shit for five turns because somebody's going to attack me, right? But it's the best overall decision for you winning the game in in twelve turns from now. Yeah, and these decks do reward that. That's why they're difficult to play, and. If they're difficult to play, that means you probably lose less, which makes it look like a weakness. Sure. I'm also going to say this would be a very difficult political deck to get by a playgroup that's familiar with it. Oh, yeah. And it's also something that if you were to bring to EDH&M with us, 
I would pummel you in yeah, every game I possibly could for the rest of the evening for this kind of shenaniganery. And it's not because I don't like the deck. It's just it's not the it's not going to be the most fun thing to play against with randos. And I'll bet you your friends probably don't like it that much either unless they're really into those like grindy yeah loophole ridden i'm gonna i'm smarter than you i'm gonna figure out how to beat this kind of games you know what you know what i think i like this deck it seems as though there are many different options for all of the the cards that are in there right like cyclonic rift is a good poster child for this because i could bounce your one thing or everything depending on what point of the game it's at like narset has multiple functions ashiok multiple functions there's tutors for your graveyard then different types of reanimates right it's grindy and there's lots of minutia it reminds me of my alenda deck mm. which i know you also don't like <laughs> because it's like that grindiness that it, this deck has kind of makes it resilient to all things it's like a jack of all trades because it can kind of do everything but at the same time like you're dedicating slots to that so instead of dedicating slots to card draw or tutors or faster mana you're kind of just spreading your your defenses thinner to catch more things you know what i mean i do know what you mean and and that means like you, only six card draw only seven ramp spells Right, that's like that's kind of low. Like lots of decks run ten to twelve ramp things. I'm cool with with decks that don't run a bazillion ramp things. I think ramp is boring. I think games of EDH, and I've I've seen I've watched a couple of these other tables and stuff. And this is just me again personally, where the de it's like land go land go land go land rock land rock land, rock 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 land ramp 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 ramp. And then it's like turn six, and it's like okay, now I'm gonna play my first. And it's like fuck, that's so just, yeah. What's the thing? And again, I think it it goes back to what your play group wants their experience to be right yeah like and i mean this deck obviously isn't from our group but i mean i would play against it in, in real life once. Yo, hey you know what i like that that land rock go land rock go land rock go good beer drinking deck true right because yeah. like the first three or four turns of the game go like super fast and you just slam a couple beer it's not a bad thing. And then Evan's on turn seven, and you have like time to run to the liquor store, and you can come back. Yeah, take your dog for a walk. Can file your taxes. You can go vote. <laughs> <laughs> F you, Evan, and your slow turns. Yeah, that's right. Learn your own decks. So last thing, and this is this is where I'm going to talk about some some suggestions. Is we're doing fair things, right? We we're attacking with creatures to try and win. We're dedicating creature slots and reanimation and self mill slots to that strategy. I mean, I guess you could just try and stick a consuming aberration and then just play things. Yeah, I don't mind that. I mean, that it could be a thing. I could see how you could try and mill your opponent out with this. If I'm going to s stick a consuming aberration, I want to find my consuming aberration. I want to find my protection for it. I want to find my traumatize so it immediately is a one-hit killer, right? I want to cut all of that shit, and I just want to, like... <laughs> bounce my archaeomancer every turn and take like a time warp turn every turn with getting my archaeomancer to bounce the time warp back to my hand right that takes like two or three slots instead of the 10 that we've spent on reanimation i'm not knocking the deck because i like it but if you're gonna play this grindy game you need some way to close out the game because i don't think like 17 creatures five or six or seven of which don't actually like attack profitably for us like we've got v villas and consuming aberration do we have any other big fat fatties archfiend of depravity i guess does that count yeah that, i guess that counts it's a fiver deathbringer regent he's a he's a fiver till you can get in there it's yeah we can get in there but if we have to do some real damage like if if we're the only two players left and you're at like 36 just because you haven't done a whole bunch my my five power guy uh, <laughs> well, I'm probably I mean, not winning, right? One of the win conditions in my stacks deck is you just lock them out of the game so hard that the one infect token you gave them with an Icarat, and you infect them for 10 turns yeah. with Atraxa. And, and, like, that's, and that's what this deck is doing. The, except it's it's not... It was attacking it's not, with creatures. It's not doing that as effectively because it's spending slots on creatures instead of lock cards. It stacks light in that Narset and Ashiok and that Possessed Portal. It's not stacks proper you know what i mean yeah so i don't know that's where i would spend time tweaking and tuning the deck is to pick whatever control route i want to take whether if, that's stacks finish combo finish whatever and if you're gonna dump your 
again, I'm going to assume it's your friends, if you're going to dump your friends into the wallowing misery that this deck is fully capable of yeah, bringing upon them. that's what we're going to do. Make sure you can win the damn game. Because nothing is worse than just like, you can't play magic, you can't even draw cards, and <laughs> I can't kill you. There's nothing worse than that. I have a 2-2, two, two, and I'm just going to attack you with this, because I can't do nothing else for right now. Oh, you know dude, I mean? that that is the other thing that Cyclonic Rift is the poster child for. I'm going to cast it and win, but in like half an hour. Yeah, like in an hour. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can still go vote. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just take my turns and you just, whatever. You yeah. can't draw cards. Just fucking go. <laughs> yeah. Hoy. <laughs> Anyways. I don't want to sound like I'm dumping on either. While it's not my jam, I do see why people like it. And I can see this being a good deck. I would just find room to just... Like I always say, sometimes you just got to make the game end. Do something dirty. And this is something where you're going to set up a game state where everybody wants it to end. Don't just try and beat them with a 5-5. Five five. I got this. I got this. We're going to move on to your favorite section right after this. I'm going to say, F you, Gene. I like the deck. But listen, your friends are going to put all their dice together in one big pile, and they're going to put it in a soccer sock, and they're going to start beating you with it. Yeah. Put a win con in there. Should we talk about a card of the week? Got there. I thought I, I, I knew I knew you'd pick it up. I, I I got you, fam. What should we do this week? There's a couple that I really like. I kind of want to give it to Ashiok because I love the picture. I love the card. I love that it's like graveyard removal, anti tutor stuff. We're playing tutor colors, and we're saying no tutoring. Sorry. Now everybody, please. Ashiok's like a... Everybody knows Ashiok. It's a hell of a drug. How about, instead, we go into this deck of, of Wallowing Misery, and we find something that's an actual, super fun, super interesting EDH card. How about that? Sure. How about we pick Omen Machine? The card that I thought wouldn't let you do anything actually lets you do everything for free. Yes. Sure. Omen Machine. Okay. Oma Machine is an artifact for six. Uh, players can't draw cards. That's Ryan's favorite thing. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. If it is a land card, that player puts it into play. Otherwise, that player casts that spell without playing its mana cost, if able. Sometimes there's going to be stuff you, you can't play. If you're going to pick one up for yourself and you want to do just weird EDH things, which I think we should all want to do, it's going to cost you one American dollar or 47 Canadian dollars, and this site doesn't give me a foil multiplier, so I don't have that information to give you right now, and, I, and I'm sorry for that. I lied. I lied. I found it. There is a button I can click. Foil. New Phyrexia Omen Machine. The only printing. 319 American. That's about 119 Canadian. Still a fairly good card, a fairly decent value for all of the fun that it's going to deliver to your table and your playgroup. Yeah, I think I think if I was going to play like group hug or anything that's going to give the opponents more cards or encourage like faster gameplay, I think Omen Machine's a good go-to. Omen Machine is fine. I think it's a cool card. You don't see it very much. I think it was in a modern, not a modern deck, an extended deck or a an standard extended deck or deck. something, <laughs> which is insane to say, but I think it actually was a card that was played at, at one point. Sure. So pick them up. They're a buck, and they're fun. They are fun. That's it. So looking at EDHREC.com, we've got 171 lists for Tygom Sadisi's hand. That is the black, blue one. We've done the blue, white one, the extra turns one. Ball's that. Puts her uh, right above shit and right below syphilis. Yeah, that's 17th in Demir Commanders. Yeah. That's right. Higher than Sadak, Lord of Secrets. Oh, yeah? Lower than a Trata. We've done all of those. Yes, we have. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. So average CMC, 3.33. That's fine. Optimal game size. We're playing this in four-man pods. We don't touch on that very often anymore, but I think it's worth mentioning that like some decks are better in five-player games. I don't think this is one of them. I think that this one will... I th The hate that you will event you will inevitably draw upon yourself, <laughs> you're going to not want to have five opponents to, to try and kill you. I kind of I like that. I kind of like that. You know what that affords you the opportunity to do? If you're getting hated on, you could just like... Take the deck Die. apart or, or power the deck down and demonstrate that through losing a whole ton of games. Or you could say, hey, you guys are going to target me. Okay, I'm just going to make the deck better. Yeah. Those are the two options. 
some some of them you power the deck down, some of them you power it up. Depends how attached you, to, you are to it. Right, good. Let us know in the comments, I guess. Yeah. Uniqueness rating. This is cards different than the stock recommendation list on edhrec.com. Only 22 cards different. That's well, a, that's. when you run into things with... This isn't a linear build path commander, but it kind of... it's. You know what it is? It's a skip your draw step, get every card that says that build path commander. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't build itself. I'm using air quotes. I'm going to keep using them. But it does sort of build itself. That's the thing. Because people are going to look at it and think, oh, it says skip your draw. I'm just going to skip my draw step. And da, 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 I'm going to make da, da, da. everybody skip their draw step because I actually don't. <laughs> yeah. Why does it play Null Profusion? I just thought of that. Oh, have a Null Profusion. Yeah. That'd be a good one. I like it. That'd be a good card in here. That's a combo list right there. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So we punch it all into the spice calculator. Two tutors in that... Mausoleum Secrets, and I counted Buried Alive. As you should. Spice Calculator 34. It's a, again, we just talked about how it's not a linear build commander, but it's a pretty on-the-nose build commander, so that's not too bad. You know what? At the end of the day, it still says skip your draw step and incentivizes you to still play it. Yeah. I'm going to play this card. That's a thing, <laughs> And I'm yeah. going to like it. <laughs> I'm going to like it. That's my final thought of the day. Give us a quick merch rundown, deck giveaway rundown, final thought of the day. Shirts, stickers, playmats available at commandercookout.com slash store. Check those out. They're going to be in soon shipping soon after that. If you would like to win our Brawl Deck giveaway, you just need to follow, share, like, comment on any of our giveaway posts on Twitter, Facebook, Hell, leave a YouTube comment, take a dump on the like button, whatever you want to do, get you entered into win there. If you have a face-to-face games.com thing, remember if you leave a comment on any of our episodes, or if you're going to be interacting with us anywhere else on the internet, tag face-to-face games and something that you've tagged us in will give you a $25 credit for the store there. Big thanks to face-to-face games.com. They are Canada's biggest magic store, and they do help us bring this lovely show to all of your ear holes every week. So thank you all for being here. Thanks them for letting us stay here. As far as the deck goes, again, it's not really my jam, but I can see how people would enjoy it. I can see how it would be fun to play against sometimes under the right circumstances. Just put a win con in, and I think I'd like it more, just like Ryan said. So if you want to... Do that. Get at us on the Discord. Maybe we can help you out. We'll think of something that'll still remain fun and swingy and fair, but also, you know, help your friends get out of the muck and play another game. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on a sec. You put your Blade of Selves on the Consuming Aberration. You just kill everybody. That'll do it. Not playing Blade of Selves, Ryan. Sword of the Animist. That's That's the Get a Land one? Yeah. Oh. Cut it. Blade of Selves. We did it. Got there. Broke the deck, (laughs) baby. Wide open. And that's what we do. And we're going to do it again in another episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song. (laughs)